Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This is the annual What is on my iPhone video, which is always super, super exciting. And in fact, super excitingly this year, I'm actually gonna be showing you all of the different apps that I use categorized by the room of the house, or the location that I use the apps in. So let's start with location number one. All right, let's talk about apps that I use in the bedroom. Now, the only one that I consider myself allowed to use in the bedroom is Audible, because often um, if I'm getting ready for bed, I will have my AirPods in. I'll be listening to a book on Audible. I've just finished The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. Simpson, which is apparently one of Bill Gates' favorite books. And it's about a genetics professor with autism who's trying to find a wife. So that was relatable in some ways. And at the moment, I'm listening to the Pillars of the Earth series by Ken Follett, which is very good. Now, normally I try to not bring my phone into bed with me, but occasionally I do. And that is when I end up spending lots of time on Clubhouse. I've been spending a fair bit of time on Clubhouse recently. You can follow me on there if you like. Clubhouse, if you're not familiar, is like audio, sort of like Discord, <laughs> Discord audio rooms. For different topics and so occasionally i see that some of my friends in america like youtubers in my agency are doing an event uh, which in america time ends up being midnight in the uk and often then i open clubhouse thinking oh i'll just listen in for a few minutes and then i get like involved and then i get sucked in and then i'm there at three o'clock in the morning obviously if i do take my phone into bed i inevitably end up wasting time on instagram often i scroll through instagram and sometimes if i'm feeling particularly narcissistic i'll scroll through my own instagram feed and watch some of my old stuff and of course i also spend large amounts of time scrolling through twitter uh, and twitter and instagram are the banes of my life and that's why i try my very best not to bring my phone into bed with me oh and one more app which i don't really use actively but which is passively tracking my sleep is called auto sleep. So depending on how I'm feeling, often I will track my sleep using my Aura ring and my Apple watch, which I'm not wearing at the moment because I've been wearing it for so long that it's caused some like, you know, dermatitis on my skin or something weird like that. But normally I track my sleep using my Apple watch and auto sleep takes all that data and tells me how well I'm sleeping. Haven't really found the trends to be particularly helpful, but I thought, I thought, hey, the data's there, so I might be able to query it at some point. So those were the apps I use in the bedroom. Let's now head over to the bathroom. Okay, now we're in the bathroom. Don't judge me for this. I know you do the same thing. We all bring our phone into the bathroom and then we end up using lots of apps in the bathroom. Now, when I'm being a waste man, the ones that I scroll through are Twitter and Instagram, which we've talked about already, and YouTube Studio. The bathroom is actually where I respond to most of my YouTube comments. So I'll go on YouTube Studio, I'll, cl I'll click on the comments thing. Usually, I, if I see a comment, I just like it because then it helps me keep track of what the comment is. And I will try my very best to reply to people's comments while I'm on the toilet. So that's if I'm being a waste man. But one thing I'm trying to do when I'm in the bathroom is instead of using Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, I'm instead trying to use Instapaper. Now, Instapaper is the app that I use to collect all of the articles that I have stumbled across on the internet that I know I want to read later at some point. But if I don't have time to read them there and then, usually when I'm on the computer, I'll save them to Instapaper and then they'll be in a nice little feed on my phone. And hopefully, what I'm hoping is that <laughs> when I have free time, like when I'm on the toilet, I will read through an article that I've wanted to save already. And the really cool thing about Instapaper is that I can highlight things. And thanks to the app called Readwise, which I'll talk more about later, it automatically synchronizes to Roam and Notion, which are two of my kind of pivotal note-taking apps that I'll talk about in a little bit as well. Here's an interesting one. The modern trap of feeling obligated to turn hobbies into hustles. <laughs> so clearly I saved that to Instapaper thinking, oh, this is an interesting article, I should read that. Now let's say I want to highlight a bit of it, I'll hit the highlight button, and now it's going to show up in my Rome research for my daily note, uh, and it's pretty magical. So that's what I do when I'm sitting on the toilet. Let's now move into the kitchen. All right, so now we come to the kitchen, and normally when I'm in the kitchen, I make myself a cup of coffee, and as the coffee is going, I ask Alexa to set me a two-minute timer. And then in those two minutes, usually I'm checking my calendar to see what my day is looking at. So the calendar app I use is called Fantastical. It's pretty solid. I've been using it for the last, like, I don't know, four or five years at this point. It's a little bit expensive, but it's pretty good. And the cool thing about Fantastical is that it like syncs with Google Calendar and iCloud Calendar and all the other calendars, and I can subscribe to different calendars. It's all the same stuff that any other calendar app does, but because I've been using it so long, I have basically no reason to switch away from it. Occasionally while I'm in the kitchen as well, I will also browse a little bit of TikTok. Recently I've started to become more active on TikTok, so you should follow me on TikTok if you aren't already. And it's mostly like the life advice stuff that I post on TikTok, you know, with like a, a little bit of a... <laughs> Um, like TikTok captions and emojis and trying to keep it short and sweet. But sometimes I post experimental content on TikTok as well. So this is me trying to do a Harry Potter impression. I have rabbit harp string home. Turn this water into rum. Then again, clearly some of you have come to Hogwarts in possession of abilities so formidable that you feel confident enough to not pay attention. And again, 
And finally, depending on whether I'm trying to hit my goals of getting six pack abs, I'm not right now, um, I will occasionally use my fitness pal to track my calories and my macros and that kind of stuff. And if you look for the last year, I started off at 73 kilograms this time last year, and I'm currently about 79 kilograms. So things are not going great on the front of trying to get shredded with six pack abs. And then usually I grab my coffee from the kitchen and make my way into this armchair where I sit with my feet up and my blanket usually. And when I'm not sitting here playing PlayStation or watching TV, I like to treat this as a bit of a alternative work corner uh, as an alternative to my desk. And so the main app that I spend a lot of my time in is Slack. This is how my team and I communicate. And it's how we talk about stuff around the YouTube channel and the podcast and brainstorming titles and thumbnail ideas for videos, that sort of thing. Slack is also what we use to host the members only community for the part-time YouTuber Academy Inner Circle, which is our membership community for the alumni of the part-time YouTuber Academy. And so we've got a channel for like general gear questions, feedback on videos, titles and thumbnails, support, tips and tricks, that sort of stuff. It's a very nice, wholesome community. While I'm sitting here on my phone, I often use the app Drafts to take any notes on anything that's top of mind. Generally, the app that I use for note-taking these days is Rome Research, but Rome is still a little bit temperamental, so often I switch to drafts if I ever need to write something down. In particular, if I have a random idea for a new video, which I often have while I'm sipping on coffee in the morning and on my phone, then I'll just try to try and write a quick script in draft. So this is what my intro to Bitcoin video started off as, as a draft script written on my phone, and that'll be linked up there somewhere. Another cool app I've been using recently is called Shortform. Shortform is like really good summaries of popular nonfiction books. So for example, if we read the summary for The War of Art, this is what we used to create a video, which is I think coming out next week around this book, The War of Art. And it's really nice because they give you like a really detailed one page summary. But then on top of the one page summary, you've got a full summary as well. And that sort of gives you a chapter by chapter summary of the book. And I don't use short form as an alternative for reading books. I use it as like an in addition. Or if I come across a book and I'm not sure I want to read it, I'll see if they've got a summary of it on short form and for a lot of them they do. And then if I like the short form summary, then I'll actually read the book. So those are the apps that I use when I'm sitting on the armchair. Let's now move on to the sofa where I do my relaxing on my phone. Sometimes while I'm here on the couch, I will just mindlessly scroll through Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube studio, and occasionally TikTok. But if I'm feeling particularly frisky, I might hang out a little bit on Hinge and check out some of my matches. This is what my profile looks like for whatever it's worth. Do let me know if, if there's any ways I can improve it down in the, in the comments below. Uh, obviously flexing my million subscribers plaque as the very first thing on my Hinge profile. The hallmark of a good relationship is where we spend 90% of our time doing our own thing and 10% of it hanging out slash doing stuff together. Got my uniform, nice picture of me. If loving this is wrong, I don't want to be right. Long road trips, listening to audiobooks at 2x speed. And yeah, that's a profile. Uh, how many? Ooh, 69 matches so far or likes so far because I've got Hinge Premium so I can see who likes me before they can see that I've liked them, so which saves me a lot of time. I've also still got subscriptions to Tinder Gold and Bumble Premium. I actually have a, a lifetime membership to Bumble, <laughs> Bumble Premium because it was on sale and I thought, you know what, why not? Uh, but Hinge is where it's at these days, so I don't really use any of the others. Sometimes if I'm in the mood to read a book, I'll use the Kindle app, which is surprisingly good. Uh, if I can't get, can't be bothered to get my Kindle, which is all the way across the flat in my bedroom, then I'll just read on the Kindle app on my phone. Uh, I've just finished reading Open, the autobiography of Andre Agassi, which was absolutely fantastic. And I'm now reading a book called How to Find Fulfilling Work, uh, which is published by the School of Life, which is very interesting indeed. It talks about all the different ways in which we find meaning in our jobs and the quest for meaning and all the ways in which sometimes our jobs can feel meaningless. Alternatively, if I'm feeling like listening to a podcast, then the app that I use is called Air Audio, which I think is still only on iOS, unfortunately. The cool thing about Air is that while you're listening to a podcast, you can hit the air quote button and it will save a quote from the podcast. And usually they have transcripts of the most popular podcast, including mine and my brothers. Uh, and so it like clips the last 30 seconds that you were listening to. And so you've got that saved. And the really cool thing is that I've got this synchronized with uh, Readwise into my Notion and my Roam setup. So I can immediately see the transcripts that I've air quoted from podcasts that I've listened to. So for example, you know, this Seth Godin episode I heard in October, loads and loads of air quotes from me. And I can go through the air quotes and I can be like, oh yeah, I can re I can revisit the stuff. This is all kind of theoretical. I have never once actually gone through my air quotes for a podcast and actually done something with them, but it makes me feel better to know that they're there and it's not just, you know, going in one ear and out the other. And then I've, I used to have this real problem. I still have this real problem with always forgetting the wisdom that I picked up in podcasts. And finally, while I'm on the sofa, I might occasionally go into Lightroom, I might take a selfie of myself and then go into Lightroom to edit it to upload onto Instagram. And so if, for example, I wanna edit a thumbnail, then I can do adjustments to it in Lightroom and then I can upload it to Instagram with some fancier effects put in if that's what I'm into. Next, we have one app that I use when I'm on the piano. 
keyboard rather, and that is Ultimate Guitar Tabs. Now the cool thing about this app is that you can search for any song in the world and you can find the chords to that song and then you can play the song. So these are the songs in my favorites list. If we pick Can You Feel The Love Tonight, it'll just tell me the chords for it so I can be like, of day when the heat of a rolling world can be turned away so that's ultimate guitar tabs and you can follow me on instagram to see more of that singing type stuff if you're into that so that's ultimate guitar tabs but now as i film this it's around 10 p.m and i'm feeling a little bit hungry so my housemate sheen and i are going to go to mcdonald's to grab a drive through and the really cool thing uh, is that I now have the Tesla app on my phone, which lets me pre-warm the car so that when we get into it, it will be warm. So we click on the climate button and I can hit turn on climate and I can heat the front driver and passenger seat remotely. At the moment, the interior is two degrees Celsius, which is very cold, uh, but because I've turned on climate, it's gonna warm up in about five minutes and then we're gonna go into the car, grab a McDonald's and this is, this is pretty cool, hashtag flex. All right, so we're in the car. We're just about to go to McDonald's. Usually when I'm in the car by myself, I like to listen to audiobooks on Audible at double speed or podcasts on air audio at triple speed. But because Sheen, my housemate is with me, we're not allowed to do that. And instead we got my boy Ed Sheeran playing on the Spotify. Gonna put the phone on the wireless charger so that it'll charge wirelessly while the car is going. And now we'll see you in McDonald's. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, hello. Whoops. <laughs> Cheers, you too, bye-bye. All righty. Yes, cannot wait for this Mackey's. It's gonna be lit. Shall we eat when we get home or no? Up to you. All right, so food has arrived. Now we're gonna turn on the uh, old. Get cozy. We turn the lights on. And this is how Sheen and I eat our McDonald's together, isn't it Sheen? And finally, we come to the desk. Now there's actually very few things that I do with my phone on my desk because it's just a hundred times more efficient to use apps on my Mac rather than on my phone. And basically every app I use for productivity is cross-platform, so it works on my phone, Mac, iPad, whatever. But because this is a what's on my iPhone video, um, the app that I use for all of my note-taking is Roam Research these days. Mostly on desktop, I very rarely use it on, on, on iPhone, but it does have a reasonable quick capture way of taking notes and I'll put a video up there that shows more about how I use Roam in case you want to check it out. So Roam is what I use for personal note taking but the app that we use for team note taking is Notion unsurprisingly. Notion is how me and my team and my business and almost my life apart from personal note taking. This is how we organize everything. Video schedule, um, book reviews, uh, courses, website, podcast, research for my book. It's all going into various Notion pages and Notion is what we use for absolutely everything. Again, put a link over there and in the video description to more videos where I talk in depth about exactly how I use Notion because I've talked about that ad nauseum on this channel so far. The app that I use for private journaling is called Day One. Um, and I'm not gonna show you what my journal looks like because I, well, it's, you know, a private journal. Um, usually I don't use day one on my phone, uh, but again, cross platform. So if I want to type anything into day one, I usually just type it on my Mac, usually before I go to sleep uh, or in the morning when I'm doing my morning journaling, chuck it straight into day one. I've been using day one since like 2014 or 2015, something like that. So I actually have five years worth of journal entries in day one. And yeah, you can see these blue days are the ones where I've actually used it. I have kind of periods where I use it quite a lot and periods where I don't use it at all, but you know, it's actually quite nice to be able to look back on my life and it, it gives you these things of, you know, on this day, five years ago, this is what you wrote. And I'm like, oh damn, on this day in 2016, this is what I was thinking. That's kind of interesting. Music wise, Spotify for absolutely everything. I would love to be an Apple Music sort of person, but it's just so bad compared to Spotify. And right now I'm playing an instrumental playlist for Homework Club for my part-time YouTuber Academy where me and like 12 other people were all filming various videos for our YouTube channels and just doing it together. Oh, and in terms of email, I actually use the email app Superhuman. Superhuman is apparently the fastest way to do email. I've been using Superhuman since like June of 2019, and it's a very solid app. I have found no reason to switch. Uh, it's a bit expensive. It basically lets gives you the privilege of paying to check your Gmail, but I actually really like it, and it's, uh, it's a it's a pretty solid app. So yeah, superhuman across all my devices is how I check my email. And finally, an app that I've actually been using relatively recently is Discord. Now I dabbled with having a kind of fan Discord server at one point, but it just became way too much to manage. Maybe thinking about restarting one, if anyone's interested in being a moderator for it or helping me start one out, drop me an email. Um, 
me email addresses on the website and in the video description. But now I use it like for the last for the last few days. I've been playing Call of Duty, uh, Cold War, Modern Warfare, Cold War, Black Ops, Cold War, Black Ops, whatever it's called, with some friends. We've we've been playing like domination mode, uh, and so we have a voice channel on Discord where. I will sit on, sit on the couch, play PlayStation with my AirPods in, and I'll, uh, I'll be on Discord with the boys. And the final app I wanna to talk to you about is actually one that I often use while I'm on the sofa because it's just so easy to access on my phone, but I also use it on the iPad and on desktop if sometimes I feel like it. And that is the app Brilliant, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Now Brilliant is actually a fantastic app that has courses in all sorts of topics of maths, science, and computer science. Recently, I've completed their course on cryptocurrencies, which was particularly interesting as an introduction to how things like Bitcoin work and like, cryptographic hash functions and all the interesting science behind that. And I've recently started doing the Programming with Python course, learn one of the most in-demand programming languages the fun way. And I've been dabbling with the courses on Brilliant for around 18 months now, and I'm always like genuinely impressed by how engaging and interactive and fun it actually is to go through the thing. And so often if I'm in a bit of a slump where I'm like, okay, it's like the afternoon and I can't be bothered to get, to back, get back to work, I'll just do a course on Brilliant and just work through some of the exercises and it's often like so engaging that it just gets my brain back into gear so that I can actually do work properly. If you're interested in learning how to code by understanding the fundamentals of Python, the world's most popular programming language, or if you want to join me in checking out any of the other courses in maths, science, and computer science, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash Ali, and the first 200 people to hit that link, which is also in the video description, will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. If you guys like this what's on my iPhone type video, you might like to check out this video, which is all the apps on my iPad for 2021, or that video, which is all the apps on my MacBook for 2021. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.